Right. For this video, I'm assuming you've understood the circular flow perfectly. If you haven't, watch my previous video on the circular flow. Right, let's move from the circular flow to now measurements of growth. The circular flow is brilliant because yes, it gives us a measure of the economy, a model of the economy, but it also gives us three ways in which we can measure economic growth. So what I've done, I've redrawn the circular flow, but I've just added a couple of things on to it. So yes, we still got income, we still got expenditure, um, but now I've just added on the first stage where households provide factors of production, basically labour to firms, and firms use that to then produce goods and services, um, which are then bought up by households. So I've just included these two extra things, otherwise it's exactly the same thing. Uh, and yes, we know there are leakages to the circular flow and injections, they're not really important here. But what we want to consider are the measurements. So if the circular flow gives us an idea of the flow of money in the economy, then if we measure, if we find a measure of that flow, and we can say that in one year, the, the flow actually increased, um, or the flow actually decreased, then that can give us a measure of growth. So if the flow managed to, to increase in force, then maybe in that year growth has increased. In which case, great, we need to find a measure of this flow. There are three ways in which we can do it. We can measure the value of these goods and services. These are all part of the flow. So by measuring the value of goods and services, we get a measure of the flow. We can measure the total level of incomes in the economy. That's part of the flow. And we can also measure the level of spending in the economy, right? the expenditure in the economy, and that gives us an idea of the flow as well. So there are three different ways in which we can measure economic growth. And these are all the different methods. So let's have a look. Number one, measuring the value of goods and services, which is known as the output method. This is the output method of measuring growth, measuring GDP basically, is the output method. So what this does is it uh, works out all the goods and services produced in the economy. Right? The value of those goods and services is then added up. And that gives you an idea of the value of these goods and services. It gives you an idea of this part of the flow. And that's known as the output method. GDP basically, the value of all the goods and services produced in the economy. Okay? You add them all up and you get an idea of output in the economy. Right? So this basically is real GDP as we come to know it. Something you must be quite familiar with. That's the method, output method, real GDP. There are a few things we need to understand here with this method though. It's not just as simple as um, going to firms, working out what they're producing, the value of what they actually go on and sell, is then added up. It's not quite as simple as that. What needs to be ensured is done with the output method is that the value added is calculated, not just the value, the value added specifically. Consider copper, let's say. Copper goes through different stages, doesn't it? Initially, copper is extracted, extracted from the ground, right? It's mined. So in that sense, okay, we have got copper, um, there is a value of that basic copper when it's then sold on to secondary firms who then kind of transform it and make it into either wiring or something. But when it becomes wiring, we can't add on the value of copper again, otherwise we're double counting. So the value added simply. So if the initial price of copper I know was £2 and then the copper wiring was sold for £5, the value added is £3. That's what's added in the second stage not the full five pounds, otherwise we would double count, wouldn't we, the value of copper. So the output method, yes, it's the value of goods and services, but more specifically, it's the value added. And one key problem with this is the issue of double counting, like I've just said. It's hard to ensure that there isn't double counting going on and that we don't skew our figures and inflate them too high. So that's the output method, okay? The value added of all the goods and services produced in the economy. Basically, it's real GDP. You can also measure the total level of incomes in the economy, the income method. So if that's the incomes of firms, if that's the income of government, if that's the income of consumers, whatever, all the incomes made in the economy, right, add them all up and you get a measure of this part of the flow. You can also measure expenditure, the expenditure method. So the expenditure method includes all the leakages and consumption itself. So the expenditure method is all the different types of spending in the economy. 
C plus I plus G plus net export spending. Now I wonder where you've seen that before. Aggregate demand, right? So that's the expenditure method. Ag aggregate demand is just a measure of spending in the economy. So when you add all of these up, consumer spending, investment spending, government spending, and then export spending, you get an idea of total expenditure in the economy, this part of the flow. So all of these things can, all of these three things can be used to measure economic growth. Really, because they're all part of the same flow, right? And the flow has got um, a certain speed, you know, one basic speed. If you measure any one of these three things, you will get the same figure. So output equals income equals expenditure. So when we talk about real GDP, and if someone else then talks about real income, it really means exactly the same thing. Because somebody's income is also then their expenditure, when they spend it, is also then the value of what they're actually buying up. They're all absolutely equal. So if you hear aggregate demand, if you see that, aggregate demand, that's also growth. If you see real income, that means growth. If you see uh, output, total output, national output, that means growth. They all mean the same thing. Bear that in mind. They're all three different measures of growth, but exactly the same figure you'll get at the end. Thanks very much. See you next time.